your hometown that you've lived in for 20, 30, 40 years, take that, try it, test it, see how it fits. And turns out I'm, I'm bigger than the labels I've given myself. We are not happy in our jobs and do not have passion for the work we've been doing. We want to quit and use some of our savings to travel while trying to figure out what we want to do for the next 10 to 20 years of our career. Are we being unwise? That's, That's an a excuse. Bad idea. Yeah, it's a, a bad, bad idea. It's a, it's a, Dave Ramsey is a financial guy. He's a personal finance coach. This is what he does. And so he's just letting you know, kind of from that financial viewpoint, that you're putting a huge risk on your finances that you don't necessarily need to do, which I get. I get quitting your job and not having another job, not having another income source to go to is generally speaking a really crazy idea. And so I fully understand what he's saying. Here's what I think Dave Ramsey and his co-host is not getting, which is lifestyle change. Six months means you're looking for a lifestyle change. You're looking for an aha moment. You're looking for something bigger and better. Travel, it makes the most sense, especially if you can afford it. Do you have to travel to have an aha moment? No. You don't have to go to Europe for five months to find yourself. By the way, yourself is not in Europe. Yourself right. is right where That's yourself right. is. Because your aha moment ultimately comes from here. It comes from your awareness. It comes from your self-awareness, from your understanding of how you feel, how you're reacting to certain things, right? To stimulus around you. So you don't have to travel. You could also travel in your backyard. You can travel to a staycation in the same state, in the same city. You can go to a friend's house. Like there's lots of ways to change your environment and get a new perspective and use that as a catalyst for an aha moment, for inspiration. And travel is certainly just one way, but travel is a really effective way. It's a really effective way to get a different perspective on life, to get a different perspective on ways of living. When you're stuck in your own bubble, when you're in the same place day in, day out, you have a role to play. You're the big sister, you're the funny one, you're the one that always brings the chips and dips. You're the one, like we all have titles that we carry with us in life. And what we don't always realize, especially if you haven't traveled, is that it's often location slash people specific. This is why some people travel. This is why some people join the military, actually, not because they wanted to serve. They wanted to leave their hometown. You know, if you've ever told your family, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna become a vegan. If your family is not vegan centered, if, if that's not their lifestyle, they're gonna be like, that's crazy. You're never gonna eat meat. They're going to push back. Same for if you tell your family, hey, I wanna travel for the rest of my life. They're gonna be, they're gonna say what Dave said. They're gonna say, what are you trying to escape? Where are you trying to go? You wanna become a ballerina and you've got zero dance history. Your family at some point, you know, if you're a child, they might support you, but the older you get, the more likely your family is gonna be like, sweetheart, we've never seen you dance. You can't do that. But the beauty of travel, the beauty of travel is multifold. On the one hand, you're, you're going to see and hear and observe and meet people that you've never met. But on the other hand, in a new environment, you can practice new habits. This is why rehab centers around the world work really, really well really well. They take you out of your home environment. They put you into a rehab center where in every sense of the word, you're transported to a completely new location. Rehab centers work because they take you out of your home environment, put you into a new environment that really supports this thing you're trying to change. But you'll find a lot of people who go to rehab, they have the hardest time when they come back to real life, when they come back to their normal, their everyday. because they're coming back to an environment where they always smoked. They're coming back to an environment where they always drank. They're coming back to an environment where they had these certain habits and everything in their environment triggers that. And so in the rehab center, they don't have those triggers. When they come back home, they do. You probably do know what will make you happy. You probably know that there are certain triggers, that there are certain habits you wanna change and you just can't seem to do it. Right? You just can't seem to, in your current environment, do it. And doesn't travel sound like a lovely way to do it? So on the one hand, it's an escapism, but escapism can work. Again, it's how rehab facilities work. It's how people are able to go to these facilities, get clean, get better. And if they were able 
to instead of coming back home, if they were able to go to a different environment, the chances of it lasting, I'm just gonna say, the chances of it lasting will increase much, much more. I say this all the time, the, the travel, the full-time travel lifestyle is distinctly a privileged lifestyle. Not everyone can do it. The bar is not as high as you might think. It's not as privileged, it's not as difficult to get into. The, the barrier to entry is not as high as you might expect. But nevertheless, I do get totally that not everyone can necessarily do this. But this couple that has a little less than 100,000 in savings, this couple that has a decent amount in retirement, has a decent amount coming to them from selling their home, could certainly could certainly travel a little bit and and see different perspectives and start life probably somewhere else probably coming back to California and going back to their job is a stupid idea I concur with Dave Ramsey in that uh, if you're if your plan is to escape for a short period and then come back home that's not okay many people have said this you should take it to heart if you need a vacation from everyday life you need to change it if you need a vacation for six months from your current job, you, you need a new job. You need to figure out your priority. You need to figure out what matters to you. Go towards that. And if it happens to include travel, then absolutely. You don't need a six month break. You need a six month lifestyle change. You need a six month, let's, let's try something new, let's try something different. And taking yourself out of your home environment and going someplace new is really a fantastic way, fantastic way to start over. And one of the reasons why I loved traveling so much as a kid, right, moving relatively frequently during my school years is that every time I went to a new school, yes, I had to figure out the new school, I had, I had to figure out the friends, but I also had to ponder like, okay, what type of friends do I like? What type of friend do I want to be? What type of mistakes did I make in my last school when it came to friendships and relationships? that I can start over again. And so you can slowly, by slow traveling, by staying in a place for a certain period of time and then moving again if you need to, you can discover opportunities for happiness, for happiness, for figuring out what it is that you like in your life, what it is that you don't like in your life, and, and kind of starting over. On a certain level, it's escapism. On a certain level, it's fantasy because it, do, it seems fantastic, doesn't it? It seems like a quick fix, but traveling can be really similar to a rehab center, to having a therapist or a coach because you get to hear, if you let yourself, you get to hear other people's opinions, see how other people live, and, and learn and grow from those moments and discover you, discover how you like things to be. Here's what I would not recommend, and here's what I think maybe Dave, and perhaps this couple is intending, is to quickly travel. If you're going to quickly travel the world, if you're going to bounce from the Egyptian pyramids to the Eiffel Tower to the beaches of Cancun, to the, like if you're just gonna jump around and stay one week, two weeks in a place and constantly move, everything's gonna blur together. You're gonna really, I think, slow down your ability to observe people and observe opportunities. It's why I'm a huge advocate of predominantly slowly traveling. And you guys know there's so many benefits, in my opinion, to the slow travel lifestyle. So if this couple is planning on staying like one week here, two weeks here, one week here, and they're just gonna like quickly go through while it's a fun lifestyle, that's escapism to me. That's, that's bouncing around, that's getting the highlight, that's getting the tourist viewpoint of, of the world, which is not accurate. And it's not the best way to get to know people. It's not the best way to get to know yourself. It's a really great way to make a channel called All the Hotels I've Stayed At, which would probably grow pretty quickly, to be honest. But my point is, if your goal is to better your life, then there is a benefit in going someplace, slowing down and observing how life is led in that location, what their cultures are, what their traditions are, what their habits are. Anything that jumps at you, anything that resonates, anything that's like, ooh, that is intriguing. Take that, try it, test it, see how it fits. Keep it if it fits, toss it if it doesn't, and, and slowly move. Your hometown that you've lived in for 20, 30, 40 years, your environment needs to change. The people in your environment needs to change if you're trying to figure something out. So all this to say, there is something magical with travel. The longer you can do it, sometimes the better. As you travel and establish your life in different locations, 
that's when you start to observe the culture more. That's when you start to observe the habits more. That's when you start to look at you and you start to realize your habits that you truly like, that you truly appreciate, and the habits that you're like, you know what, I thought that was a thing. I thought I was addicted to these three things and now that I'm in this location where they either don't have it or it's harder to get, it's actually not that big of a deal. I, I no longer self-identify. I no longer put myself in this box of someone who does a, B, and C, and turns out I'm, I'm bigger than the labels I've given myself. And, and if we're gonna talk finances, purely finances, I think Dave Ramsey and his crew are really overlooking the fact that this couple lives in California whose cost of living is super inflated. They can take the 100,000 and live for much longer than six months in other parts of the US, in other parts of the world. What might seem like escapism because the couple said it's for six months, it might look like escapism, but if we go, no, I think they're looking for a lifestyle change. I think they're looking for everything to change, not solely their job. Because if it was just their job, they would pick a career that they thought they would like, that I'm sure is available in California, and they would start the new job, whatever it is. They wanna become a chef, there's probably a way to do that in California. They want to become an artist, there's probably a way to do that in California. They wanna do Silicon Valley computer techie stuff, they can probably do that in California. If they say they want to travel and they wanna travel for six months, they want a lifestyle change. And there's a whole world out there, a whole world out there that can give you that.